Hi, it's Andrew Wheeler here again. Welcome back to a overview of Blender for Dental. Uh, today's video I'm going to do on the special train module. It's a very simple module, has some very good features. Uh, you can do an awful lot with it. This purpose of this really is just to give you a, an overview of the module, what it can do, and show you how simple and straightforward it can be to construct a special tray, especially when you compare it to uh, doing it the, uh, the analog way of putting down a base plate and doing a light cured tray. So uh, let's get started. What we'll do is we'll import a model. And as you can see from this model, uh, it is a, it's a lab scanned model from a, a, a lab scanner from Medic T500. There you can see the, the sort of the pins that hold the actual model together. Now, normally you'd kind of, you'd sit there and you'd align the scan, you'd do an arch cut, put a base on it. What I want to do today is really just um, throw this into the tray module and see what comes out. Because all the, the people I help go through Blender with, um, that obviously that they need to get to the end result as fast as possible and produce what they need to produce in the shortest possible time, whether that's a, an arch model, whether it's a special tray or, or something a bit more complicated. And it's a natural thing for technicians to cut corners when it comes to um, processes and to try and find this quickest way through it. So what I'll do with this one is I'll just put the model in and we will um, we'll crack on and see what we can produce on the special tray module. Now, because it's been uh, scanned on a lab scanner, the orientation is very good because that is also dealt with, uh, with when it was scanned. You won't get that with an intraoral scan. There'll be a lot more, um, you, the alignment stage is a lot more critical uh, because you want it to be able to extrude the, uh, the tray material uh, in the correct orientation. This won't be a problem. So let's go over to the tray module and um, let's start. So here we have the tray module. Um, we've got, uh, it's relatively self-explanatory. We've got the upper tray here, and then we've got the lower tray here. Both work on the same principle and um, start at the top and work our way down. So since we're doing a lower, what we'll do here is the first thing we need to do is survey the lower and get it in the optimal position, uh, part of insertion for uh, the special tray. You have this nice little widget right uh, hold your middle mouse button button down and you can then move and orientate the model in the position you want it to once you're happy with that we can then make the blocked out model so what this will do is obviously um, create a model on top of the original model with uh, the blocking out now, as you can see there it's it's the orientation is wrong it should be facing us um, it's not critical because we can we can move it around, but uh, that's a, that's a good sign that the orientation was not done at the beginning, and there you can see there's the issue. So now we've got the blocked out model. There you can see the the green is the block out area. Underneath that is obviously the the original model that we imported into the scene, and it's just created a, a another model over the top of that. What we need to do now is outline um, the tray edge. So we do that by uh, shift, right click, put the cursor down where we want to start. And we go ahead and pencil tray the outline. So we'll click that button. Then we can do the extrude, which allows us just to left click as we work around the model and getting the extent of the tray where we want it. Now, for those that have been working with Blender Dental, this is a familiar operation, whether it's an arch cut uh, or whether we're taking out a die, it uses the same algorithms. So then we'll move around the model. We can also reset the line by highlighting a vertice and pressing G on the keyboard, and then we can then move 
the line to a better position. So once we've got it closed, we'll fuse the line together. So as I said, if we, if we wanted to move the line, we highlight the vertices and press G, and then we can then reposition the line um, in, a, in a more favorable position. Obviously, again, we don't want the line to sink below into the scan. We won't um, create a nice cut. So once we've got the line in position, we have two options. We either have the auto tray option, which then basically just puts a default thickness of the tray, default space for the impression material down. And then we can put a handle on it and put holes in it and we're, we're finished. Or if you wanted to go uh, further, we can then use the uh, edit features. So what we'll do on this one, we'll, we'll go through this um, section here just to give you an idea of what we can do. So this is the impression. This is um, how thick, how much material, impression material, you're going to have between the model and the tray. So here it's a default at uh, three millimeters. So we've got three millimeter space. If you wanted to create more space for the more impression material, this is where you can uh, you can adjust it. It puts it in this nice handy wireframe diagram, so you can actually get a, a pretty good idea of, of where the space. Um, and and you can move the and, and create more areas such as this if you're doing an implant here. Um, once you've got the uh, thickness that you want, we just apply that and then edit and toggle. We can then have the option, as you can see here, if we want to um, move anything, we can highlight a vertice, press G, we can then resize and we can then move the vertices around creating more space for more impression material if we need it. Once we're happy with that, we just toggle out of that. We can go into the tray module. This again puts a uh, default setting of 2.7 millimeters of thickness um, of the tray. I haven't really found a, an, a, a reason to change it so far. I found that um, with the materials that I print with, this is more than thick enough. Uh, it it uh, creates a, a nice strong tray. Um, and I guess that depending on what you're going to be using it or what material you're going to be printing in, you can maybe need to thicken it up to get some more strength or even reduce it if you've got a nice strong material. Once we've got that, we can edit and toggle and change any of the dimensions we want to. And then we can then finish the lower tray. Right, finish the lower tray. There we go. I was in the wrong bit. So then what this will do is this will then reduce the tray to the actual uh, line that we marked out initially. There you can see it. If we move in, now you can see the space under the tray there for the impression material. What You can either choose to leave it like this or uh, they have a nice beading design. Obviously quite important when you're coming to indentureless trays. I still put a beading on all my trays because it just gives a nice round um, edge to the tray. This can also be changed if you can uh, control an A, hold that, and then you can then increase or decrease the size of your be beading. Once you're happy with that, we can confirm the beading and that will put a nice border around the whole uh, edge of the tray. We'll I found sometimes you need to just to smooth that junction between the tray and the beading. We've got an option here of doing that with smooth layer. Um, again, we have a little dropper option to make sure that where we smooth, we're recreating the mesh uh, in, well, in the place that you want to. So that's why you put a dropper in, in the area you want to um, recreate or replicate the mesh structure. So we can then go around the edge and we can smooth it off. Blender does such a good job of, of joining these. Um, there's actually times that uh, I found that I haven't really needed to go around and smooth these areas um, because we remesh it. 
anyway. But uh, it actually it works out. It looks actually quite nice when you've gone around it, smoothed it off. So once we're happy with that, we can exit out. And then we're going to remesh uh, the tray and make sure that the um, the structure, the vertices and the um, structure of the tray is all similar. So if we go into the edit mode and we have a look at it, there we can see that we have a nice mesh structure there with the border and with the, uh, the actual tray and helps us when we're coming to print, makes uh, printing a lot more successful if mesh structures are nice and uniform. Okay, so there we have the actual tray. What we'll do now is we'll import a lower tray to put on it. Now, as you can see there, obviously it's brought it into the work environment backwards because as you saw earlier, the model was flipped. So we were looking uh, from the back of the model if we'd aligned it initially, the tray handle would have been put in the correct place. Uh, for this case, it's not major because all we can we can easily just rotate this by pressing R on the keyboard, turning it round, and then repositioning the handle in the correct place. There we have it using R to rotate, G to grab, and we can also press S to resize if we want that tray bigger or smaller. Again, I found that the uh, default settings that the guys have programmed in work really well. I haven't really had to play around with it. Um, but like all the things within Blender, all of this stuff can be changed. You can really customize it um, to your own preferences. Once we've got the tray in the position that we're happy with, we can then finish the tray handle. We we have got some different um, styles of handle, uh, which you can choose. And we've got uh, four of them down here, all back to the original. Um, and you can also bring in your own handle. So if you design a handle you particularly want, then you can also, um, you can import your own uh, tray handle and name it um, and have it as your own bespoke tray handle. Uh, we'll finish the tray handle, which then joins the two structures together, the base and the handle. If we go into <coughs> uh, the edit mode, uh, you can see the two, we've got a, a lot denser mesh on the handle than we have on the tray. It's fine, it's not gonna cause any problems. We'll go back into object mode. And then we will finish off by painting holes on it. All we need to do is click the paint hole option, which will bring up a, a circle. And then we wipe over the surface where we want the holes. Make a mistake, we can easily go press the minus and then wipe over and that will then take away the area we've marked. The holes are not just confined to the red and yellow areas, they do stretch out a bit so um, you don't have to paint the whole thing. I just put a sort of roughly where I want the holes and then we click the cut holes option and that will put holes into, into the tray. One of the uh, Nice things is that we can then jump back into the model module, scroll down to the add text button, put a cursor down on the handle, click on the add text, and we can put a patient's name in. So, so we'll put patient's name in. We can then scale that. By the S, move it by the G key when we've got it in the right place. Try and make it as big as possible. We can either then have the choice of embossing or engraving, just as we would if we were going to put a name on a model. Can't really see it there, but if you turn over there, you can see the 
the writing that's been uh, placed on the handle. Very simple, very straightforward module. So I hope that's been useful. Uh, please hit the subscribe button and stay with me and I'll be doing some more videos soon. Uh, we'll be looking next time at a little bit more in depth about the, uh, the wax up and the diagnostic module that's come out because I think there's there's so much there that needs to be explored so I think we'll go through that one. If you have suggestions, you want to see anything, please put it in the comments below. I'm happy to uh, to take requests.